Welcome to the Prime Venture Partners Podcast. This is your host, Amit Fermani, and I'm delighted to have with me today Fareed Ahsan, co-founder of ShareChat. Uh, welcome to the show, Fareed. Hi, Amit. Thank you for hosting me. So the last time Fareed and I were together were, was at a physical RCB match, courtesy of our friends at Matrix Partners, and unfortunately, RCB lost again this year. But, but uh, it was quite a fascinating chat that we even had during the match. So I thought it'd be great. So it's three years coming to get him on the show. So Fareed, love for us, uh, for our listeners, if you can talk a little bit about your journey and the early uh, kind of share chat journey. What was the inspiration for the idea and a little bit about your own journey as well? Sure. Uh, so it's almost been now eight years uh, since we set on this journey uh, back in 2014. Uh, you know, that's the time when I graduated from IIT Kanpur along with Bhanu and Ankush. Ankush was actually still in college. He graduated a year later. And, uh, you know, we were going through a lot of uh, ideas, a lot of products which we were trying to build. We knew that uh, it's just the three of us. We do not know a lot of logistics, ops, uh, commerce. We don't know a lot of things about how business is done. Uh, but we do know uh, how to use our uh, you know, coding abilities, our product designing abilities or our user understanding abilities uh, and build an experience for people on the internet. And, uh, you know, with that in mind, we set out trying to build various social products at that, you know, back in the day in 2014, 2013, rather, uh, there was a lot of buzz around uh, anonymous messaging apps in the US, whether it was Secret, Whisper, Yik Yak, and, you know, a bunch of others. Uh, and uh, we thought that, well, you know, while they, st- you, they, they uh, established their core use case, they are still subject to some sort of abuse. And, uh, you know, that will become a, hinder, a hindrance in their scaling. And, uh, well, that actually played out like that. Uh, and we thought of, uh, you know, a product which uh, would be an, a, probably a different kind of a WhatsApp group chat. Uh, wherein people would make uh, 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 content and share anonymously within people, uh, within a group of people that they know. And uh, that's how our journey began. Uh, but as soon as we launched that product, uh, you know, we we did not really get a lot of good feedback. You know, that's generally the case with any soft launch. Uh, you know, whenever you are trying an, out a new product, you as as a product manager or a product developer or an engineer, you feel that you know what you've made. You want everyone on the globe to use it, but it doesn't necessarily work like that. Uh, and uh, so with that product, we actually went out to investors. We had about 1,000 odd users, uh, but we went out to investors. We tried meeting a bunch of them. And most people just rejected us. But there was, uh, you know, Madhukar Sinha from India Quotient who met us and said that, look, you guys make great products. Uh, you guys are good. This is not something I will fund. Uh, but, uh, you know, in case you are interested in doing something else, it's social uh, you know, please feel free to ping me. And uh, so, so once, uh, and, and actually this was right before graduation. So once we graduated, I just decided to, you know, move to Mumbai and, uh, you know, meet Madhukar Sina, brainstorm with him and see what we can build. And uh, once we did that, we figured that, uh, you know, there is a chance, there's a, there's a potential opportunity for, you know, anyone to build a platform for first time internet users. You know, back in 2014, there were no first time internet users. Uh, the logic was that someday India would come online and when all of the Indians come online, they wouldn't want to use the internet uh, only in English. They would want to use the internet in their own language and the comfort of their own language. And uh, hence there will be an opportunity for this first time internet user, uh, for someone to build a platform uh, which acts as a launchpad for this first-time internet user. Eventually, the internet user would obviously do everything like right from payments to commerce to banking to very advanced use cases also. Like people will do every each and everything uh, using the internet. But as a first pit stop in this journey, they would want to jump onto a content platform first. And that's how we, uh, you know, we came up to, uh, to the idea of building a content platform. Uh, and then, you know, it's still ShareChat wasn't born, you know, for the first six months from 2014, uh, July till 2014, December, uh, we were tinkering with the idea of launching a debate platform where, you know, people can come in, take sides, chat, debate. And at the end of, let's say, a couple of hours, it will be decided which side won the debate. Now, to grow that product, we were 
trying a bunch of growth hacks on facebook groups on whatsapp groups you know a lot of many places and there you know ankush uh, noticed a very interesting thing and very interesting pattern wherein there was a what uh, you know sachin tendulkar fan club on facebook uh where people were posting uh, you know uh, things like i am making a whatsapp group of sachin tendulkar please give me your phone numbers and there was this one particular post which has some 86000 phone numbers uh, you know in comments below it and we were like uh, yeah this is not normal this is not regular behavior why are people putting their phone numbers to join a whatsapp group when they are already on a facebook group right it's it's not making sense and uh, uh, so we just decided to you know and and then it was you know we just had the idea that look 86000 people can't know each other there cannot be one person who knows 86000 people and there cannot be 86000 people knowing one you know one person as an admin right unless that person is really really famous right so uh, so it just uh, you know it just struck us that you know why not let's just parse all these comments take out the phone numbers put them in our whatsapp makes whatsapp groups so we may, at that time whatsapp allowed only 100 people per group so we had a uh, 200 whatsapp groups each on the three of our phones with 60000 phone numbers and uh, we just started observing the behavior of these people we made like sachin tendulkar group 1 sachin tendulkar group 2 sachin tendulkar group 3 like that we had like sachin tendulkar 600 groups and uh, uh, when uh, you know we just started observing what these guys were doing and meanwhile trying to push them to download the debate app on the site but you know that that was it working for us uh though we figured some very interesting uh you know uh, nuances about this user like they are they like whatsapp because whatsapp is very reliable on 2g and LTE most of these people were coming from tier 2 tier 3 towns and in the whatsapp group they were because it is a chat driven interface you don't really have to worry about hard vocabulary because my vocabulary is not much better than your vocabulary in the tier 2 tier 3 world everyone and you know in the tier 2 tier 3 world has a limited vocabulary it's not you know you're not looking at a thousand words or or 10000 words you're probably looking at 50 to 100 words each uh, and 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 then on top of it uh, because most of our movie banners most of our media communication happens with titles being coming in english like when you imagine kuch kuch hota it's written as k u you know k uh, uh, kabhi khushi kabhi kabhi is called k3 g and not uh, ka 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 3 ja right it's, it's so so because uh, you know this uh, popular media is is a lot more around english telugu tamilish uh, and you know manglish all these uh, english in anglicized versions of uh, you know their own languages uh it it also became apparent to us that people don't really want english in the language keyboards though they want content to be in uh, you know in their own language and and then a bunch of other things about these users like they are uh they don't really have great smartphones yet they don't have they don't have great internet connection and the most important piece that since most people were not internet natives like like i you know or you we started using the internet back in early 2000s or maybe i believe amit you may have started in late 90s right so uh you know because we have grown on the internet alongside the growth of search engines like we have used yahoo as a search engine uh right so we our understanding of search is far more uh nuanced it's far more advanced compared to the first time internet user and the first time internet user doesn't really necessarily know how to do google search they definitely know how to do youtube search they definitely know how to do play store search uh, but not you know generic google search and that is where for doing this generic queries they really de- uh, depend on you know joining whatsapp groups telegram groups and asking other people for content for media for help for suggestions and 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 you know this particular observation uh and and also because of this very strong behavior around search uh almost all of them have this tendency to share content onto whatsapp you know so combining all these observations together we you know we figured out that maybe let's build a product where we have a continuous feed of content in uh, indian languages which works uh, you know the feed which should work on very low end smartphones it should work on patchy internet connection so you know the backend has to be a lot more like whatsapp and a lot less like facebook and um, and also uh, you know just put the people who belong to one language together don't let multiple languages mingle together we don't have to worry about a keyboard because most people don't care about uh, you know typing in their own language they care more about uh, you know having the same you know understanding the vocabulary and more so you know, you know if if you have a english 
script or a Telugu script or a Manglish script, uh, the youth is able to understand it far more easily as most people who are in, you know, taking primary education or secondary education, you know, beyond class 10th, they don't read the regional language or the, or Hindi, you know, in 11, 12th, if they are taking commerce, if they are taking arts, if they are taking uh, you know, science, they are not necessarily reading uh, a second language. They're mostly reading English, right? So with all of this observation, uh, you know, we launched this product and we called it share chat, right? We called it share chat because share and chat were two words that, you know, we felt that nobody would make a spelling mistake in, in any language. And uh, secondly, uh, you know, the words share and chat were things that people would understand whether they are from Tamil Nadu, whether they are from Assam, whether they are from Gujarat quite easily. And uh, yeah, we actually had another option in mind. We were thinking of chai time versus share chat. But then we felt that a lot of people have kapi and cof like coffee instead of chai. So it might not fly with them. So let's not do that. Uh, so, so we stuck with share chat. We always used to think that we'll keep another name someday. But that day never came. <laughs> share chat became the brand that we ended up building. And yeah, this Great. was December 2014. Uh, it's been yeah. Years so now. I, I have a lot of follow-up questions. I think there's a lot of things to uh, double click on. But let me pick the kind of more sort of fast forwarding to 2022. If there is somebody else, right, some other Ankush or Farid or, or, or Bhalu who's hanging on the share chat platform now, which has a few hundred million users as, as, you know, weekly or daily actives, right? And finding interesting patterns about consumer behavior, which I'm sure you and your product managers and your co-founders are doing every day. What are some of the behaviors you've seen circa 22 that were perhaps not there in 2014 or 2015? Uh, Okay, uh, I think one of the biggest uh, things that have changed is uh, uh, people have started to uh, learn how to do Google search. That's that's one uh, big difference, you know. Uh, people uh, can now fill up basic forms. Uh, you know, we earlier see a lot of the a lot a lot about the internet is about filling up forms. You know, if you can fill up a form and send a request, or you fill up a form and uh, you know, join a queue. If you fill up a form and get a ticket, if you fill up a form and get, uh, you know, sub uh, mandatory uh, certification being done, or if you fill up a form and query your board exam results, or if you fill up a form and query, you know, job openings, or if you fill up a form and query, uh, you know, what courses you can re study about. You know, most of these things uh, people have started understanding. Uh, moreover, uh, you know, back in the day, um, if you would do CBSC class 10 exam results, there will be five bogus uh, links and then there will be a sixth link by NIC, which would be uh, the real link which people would, would uh, try and click on to. Uh, today, the user doesn't click on the bogus links. The user has figured out uh, that, you know, these links are bogus, these are ads uh, and no longer you know, you can fool the first time internet user. The user has become more informed. They have become more open to the idea of uh, doing payments online. Uh, they know that if they are paying online, their money can come back if they are paying to trusted sources. You know, for instance, we are having, uh, uh, you know, micro payments uh, happening on ShareChat platform for our, you know, chat room product, uh, for our live streaming product. There's a lot of uh, virtual gifting happening on our platform. And uh, yeah, we are doing like, you know, uh, that we are doing numbers in the millions uh, for, you know, per month uh, for in, in revenue for just through, uh, you know, uh, micro, uh, micro payments and gifting. Uh, so that behavior has changed that, you know, people are ready to tip, people are ready to spend small, small amounts. And I think that's because of the UPI revolution. People have started trusting, you know, uh, you know uh, digital uh, as a way to pay. Uh, and, and then again, you know, people have started valuing uh, you know, influence and people have started valuing uh, the fact that, uh, you know, they can come close to someone who they appreciate. Uh, with, uh, you know, in uh, back in the day, people would be more like, uh, you know, ye tukko kya de dega isko agar aapne, uh, ye gift kar diya, right? So, 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 so people have, uh, you know, I would say the, the internet user is far more uh, sophisticated today. Uh, knows how to pay, knows how to question, knows how to ask, knows how to answer. So, so Farid, I want to go back to your original dream, which was to build a platform for first time internet users in general, and then specifically around the area of content, community, collaboration, chatting, whatever, right? 
and then different people build different rails, like you said, right? UPI, micro payments, everything happened. You know, video was happening in a different way. So have have we collectively now trained, quote unquote, another couple of hundred million users to be more, dare I say, right, kind of be on the regular big internet, or will we keep having the next generation of first time users keep coming? Like, have the rails been built that now some new person in you know, Bhilwada or Bhubaneswar or Rajput or whatever, just like it's very trivial for them to come onto the internet, whether it's through share chat or through some micro payment or whatever it is. Uh, and they want like richer services. That was one question. And the other one was if you can specifically focus more on the content behavior and how that has changed, right? With respect to have people, are the people, for example, now that are trained and hang around on share chat a lot. Do they want to type in their native language or have they just skipped all that and just gone to video and photos and say, we'll never type, we'll never write uh, content. We'll only speak and, and, and do videos. So both of those, right? Like, what do you think about like the new generation, the next 500 million internet users? And what do you think about the content behaviors? Yeah, I think uh, the rails have definitely been built. I think uh, the fact that uh, there is, you know, the, the first, the new internet user only comes from like three broad uh, you know, population demographics. One is uh, the oldest generation. The second is the youngest generation. And the third is women, right? This is where the majority of, uh, you know, the major, major demographics that are hopping onto the, onto the internet are coming from. Now, the for the youngest generation, uh, it is not actually us or, you know, anyone like us who is solving. It is an academy. It is people like who are working in an education, you know, in education like Baiju's an academy and all these other ed tech players. They are the ones who are making this user adapt uh, the internet uh, very quickly. And then people like us, people like uh, Instagram, people like uh, YouTube, you know, all the media players are helping them procrastinate. And then on top of it, you've got PUBG, you've got games, you've got, you know, a bunch of these live streaming apps and chatting apps and dating apps and you know so many people have built so many kinds of dating apps already in India uh, like if you know about this company called friend and then you know you know uh, there was been uh, there's there's a lot of people who are uh, you know involved in the mind of the youngsters uh, now so the rails though definitely start from edtech uh, but uh, you know there's a lot of uh, the you know the, the ramp is quite well built for the youngest generation, you know, whether they are from tier one city to tier four city to tier five city, uh, you must have seen it in your household or within your family that you know, very, very young kids are using YouTube kids. They are all watching Coco Melon, whether they are from you know, the highest echelon of uh, uh, the, the, the pyramid or, you know, the, the, the uh, lowest possible entries, you know, financial strata for the internet, right? So for the youngest, it's solved. For the oldest, again, the fact that YouTube is preloaded in all Android, you know, right? The fact that YouTube is a Google service uh, and the fact that uh, they love WhatsApp and the fact that ShareChat exists where, you know, they can fight content uh, that they can share or to WhatsApp. I think, I think that part is solved for, you know, uh, them through just these three platforms, YouTube, ShareChat and uh, WhatsApp. Now, when we come to women, I think, I think that's where it gets a bit tricky uh, that, uh, you are talking about middle-aged women uh, between the ages of 25 to 45 uh, who are neither in uh, the youngest generation or the oldest generation. They are, in some cases, also uh, earning members of the family, but they are yet not, uh, uh, you know, I would say, uh, well acquainted with uh, the smartphone internet. Uh, part of the reason is, is uh, you know, is the financial situation of our country. Like we need uh, a lot more jobs. We need a lot more uh, per capita income for, you know, that uh, uh, information democracy to trickle down to the second most important member of the family. Uh, and the second thing is that uh, a lot of utilities are yet to be built for this, uh, for, for, for the woman, for the woman of the house, right? And uh, if you look at behaviors between men and women in general, men tend to, uh, pick things which are more famous, which are catching fire, which are becoming viral. Women tend to pick things which are more utilitarian in nature. And because of this difference in first choice of things, uh, women, there are still, you know, lesser number of products available which women can adopt. Now, having said that, YouTube, ShareChat, 
मॉज रील्स सच प्रोडक्ट्स डेफिनेटली डू प्रोवाइड यू नो वन एंट्री पॉइंट फॉर दिस सेट ऑफ वीमेंट टू फाइंड क्रेडिबल कॉन्टेंट दैट दे कैन यूज दैट दे कैन यूटिलाइज दैट विद विच दे कैन मैनेज देयर हाउस बेटर प्रॉब्ली स्टार्ट सेकेंडरी इनकम स्टार्ट बिकमिंग रीसेलर ऑन मीशो समन हुज अ पार्टनर ऑफ एमेजॉन फेसबुक और एनी ऑफ दीज यू नो कॉमर्स वेबसाइट लाइक वेन आई से फेसबुक आई मीन लाइक द फेसबुक मार्केट प्लेस राइट सो सो दीज थिंग्स हैव द रेल्स आर नॉट येट एस्टैब्लिश आई वुड से दे आर इन द मेकिंग यू नो फॉर दिस सेगमेंट बट आई डोंट सी अ रीजन वाई इट वुड नॉट बी एस्टैब्लिश इन थ्री ईयर्स और फाइव ईयर्स ऑल्सो यू नो एंड वी विल कंटिन्यू टू प्ले एन इम्पॉर्टेंट रोल uh you know in in all three uh, uh demographics and of course men you know young men old men middle aged men they have adopted smartphones and the internet quite early uh you know and uh, we have you know i think uh, content as as a, a category has grown uh, alongside the growth of the internet and i think uh, you know for for this demographic the rails are very well established you know, everything is very well oiled uh, you know right from bharat pay to uh you know uh, share chat to uh let's say uh, any of these services that you know any of our unicorns that you know in india right now as now if i come to the second part of your question around content uh, how has content changed um i think uh, there was you know when we started out if you look at the content profile of uh, you know share chat about 90% of our content was text 9% was image 1% was video eventually it started changing to 50% text 40% image 10% video but then when geo happened uh it started move you know changing very rapidly to the point where i think in 2019 i remember we were 70% video 20% image 10% text and as of today we are 90% video 9% image and 1% text which is a complete reverse now what happens post video you know so that's where the headwinds have started to come up if you look at share chat chat rooms or if you look at moj live or if you look at any other live streaming platform this is the next level of video streaming you know why why was this transition not possible earlier because people were data conservative you know people wanted to spend less on data data was costly now when geo happened data became cheap so people jumped on to video as as uh, you know people started spending more data people became habituated to the fact that you know i don't really need to see recorded videos why can't i see live stream and that has actually led to the increase in uh, you know things like viewership of live sports uh, you know we are now seeing a lot more people uh, you know, while of course people still watch live sports on tv because it's the cheapest way to watch live uh, sport uh, you know live content uh, eventually we will see uh you know all the content uh, or a, a major portion of the content profile becoming live that includes live video commerce that includes uh live music shows that includes live sports that includes you know live influencer talk shows that includes everything around live so i believe live uh will be uh the next biggest category of content it is not video it is not text it is not Im- uh, you know image it is everything and anything under the sun coming live right at the moment at the point and uh, i think that's 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 where you know we are headed to the interesting bit is that people like you and me who have been on the internet for a long time now uh, we might be more apprehensive towards live compared to the first time internet because for us uh, it is not the norm we have been consuming we have been using youtube for instance for uh, you know i have been using youtube for 12 years now right and i've been using facebook for uh, I, unfortunately i don't have a facebook account anymore but you know i came on the facebook uh, the first time in 2008 which is like 14 years ago right uh, and at, back then we were on awkward and we used to be on like so many other social platforms so for people like you and me i think matlab kehne ko hum thoda you know internet age mein boodhe ho gaye you know i i am 29 but i am old by to say the least i won't even say what my age is otherwise that pehla bhi nahi hue the jab main us platform pe aa gaya tha so that's all right that's all right um no it's very interesting actually i was i was doing a podcast with tanmay bhat last week and uh, he said very 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 long ago you know how youtube was in 2013 you know it was just so different than it is now so i can't even imagine what it had it was like 2013 that was not very 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 long ago that was just like 9 years ago right but 
uh, but but fair point. I love your categorization of the oldest, youngest, you know, kind of the middle aged women and so forth. Um, I, I would be remiss. I'm going to switch gears a little bit and talk a little bit about this monetization angle because a lot of founders, right, who are doing very interesting content driven plays, social driven plays, where it is a lot about distribution and reach and engagement, but maybe not so much about monetization, certainly not in the early days, right? Uh, how do you deal with that in the journey? Uh, right, as, as a founder, because you're passionate about it, you say, look, I'm going to build an on-ramp for middle-aged women who don't get good precise content. Let's say some founder listening to this podcast today, uh, or not to mention one of your product managers or whatever, but now you say, what's good paisa to banega nahi, right? I'm not going to make money on this for a while. Uh, so how do you play that journey as a founder? Uh, I'd love to hear a little bit about that and what was your journey like? Yeah, so I think, uh, first of all, you you got to be very clear with yourself that like you don't you don't lie to uh, your investors to yourself or to your team members that you know you'll make money you know the next morning uh, the fact remains that in business models like ours like madhukar sina you know from india portion you know coins it very well that it is like a factory building business factory banane mein 10 saal lagte hain jab factory ban jati hai uske baad paisa return hona shuru hota hai 15ve saal par factory ka jitna paisa laga hota hai utna paisa pura return ho jata hai 16ve saal se factory bahut zyada paisa banana shuru hota hai and that is why building a factory is very hard and very profitable i love it it's a it's a long gestation business i used to be in travel for a while hotels yeah. were like that hotels start producing cash after 10 12 15 years so another example for our friend madhukar so but please yeah. continue yeah yeah no so you know our business is pretty much like that that because you have to build the you know first of all you have to build uh, a a reason why your top of the funnel will keep expanding a reason why people will keep you know coming back to your platform and and then secondly you have to build those uh, you know uh, experience traps if you may call them you know with which people get addicted to your product or people get stuck onto your product they may not believe it that they are addicted but you know when someone spending 30 minutes on average on a day you know on your platform वेदर वो आपको प्लेटफॉर्म को जितना भी गाली दे कि ये क्या घटिया प्लेटफॉर्म है यार मेरा कितना टाइम वेस्ट हो गया यू नो इवन देन दे लव इट यू नो इट्स द सेम विद अस इट्स द सेम विद टिकटॉक इट्स द सेम विद यूट्यूब इट्स द सेम विद नेटफ्लिक्स इट्स द सेम विद एनी कॉन्टेंट प्लेटफॉर्म हुज बीन एबल टू रिटेन यूजर्स द यूजर एट द एंड ऑफ द डे विल नॉट फील कि आह मेरा तो लाइफ चेंज हो गया इट्स इट्स लेस ऑफ अ मोमेंट इट्स मोर ऑफ अ व्हाट द फक मोमेंट राइट सो सो आई थिंक the the fact that you know to build these traps to build these experience uh, uh to build these experiences to build these situations where people want to stick long enough to uh you know probably have a discourse in the community that they have filled built there or probably just you know decorate their content which uh you know they want to show to everyone on on the platform or just want to while away time while being on you know their daily commute on train bus or anywhere else you know to build these traps it takes time to build these experiences it takes time uh, to build the top of the funnel it takes time uh, and you know even though you may be if one may be able to like i'm talking about you know the potential founder or the potential product manager listening to this podcast you know even even though you may be able to attract let's say a first bunch of users uh, there is a certain critical mass before which uh, you know your product will not be monetizable that generally if you like i use this analogy a lot but there's no proof to it is just that i have you know trained my mind to believe in it there was one uh, uh, cur- you know curve that i saw about the adoption of scooters in india that uh, and and the same curve was applicable to the adoption of television sets and the same was ad- uh, you know to to mobile phones that beyond 20% uh, adoption the uh, or, you know by population the number of people are you know, the time taken to adopt uh, by the next at 80% uh, is uh, is shorter than the time taken to adopt by the first 20% right and once you are on that 20% number somewhere around that uh, let's say uh, let's say you are let's say building for middle aged women let's say you target uh, telugu as a demographic that you will target telugu middle aged women then you're looking at let's say about uh, i think about 40 uh, 
20, 25 to 30 million people, uh, you know, who are using the internet, then, you know, telling you middle age women. So now 20% of that, that means about 4 to 5 million people. So you need 4 to 5 million MAUs first. If you're not getting there, monetize nahi hoga. You do your experiments to prove to your investors that, yes, we can monetize. You know, but they are experiments. They will not scale. Because monetization, again, is something which is done by 1% of your user base or 3% of your user base or 5% at best, right? It is not done by 20% of your user base. Right. Like on e-commerce websites, it's different because the intent to come to e-commerce is to buy. The intent to come to a content platform is not to buy. It's to while away time, right? So, uh, so if you have 5 million user base, hai, usme aap 1% user they can so you are talking about 50,000 users 50,000 users are buying uh, stuff then again you have to look at what you are selling if you are selling something which is you know just one rupee you will ne- you are never going to play- break a profit you have to figure out something that you can sell to them which probably covers up for the CAC of the 5 million people only then you will have a LTV by CAC ratio which is positive enough for you to for your factory to make sense in the long run when you have 50 million users right so so being honest to the math, being honest to the destination is something which is very important. And being honest to the fact that monetize nahi hoga day one, but you need that critical mass. Uh, I think this is this is very key for you know uh, for to keeping your sanity alive. And of course, uh, you need to find investors. Not all investors believe in this. Not all all investors like this idea. Not all investors are patient enough for that. And there's nothing wrong with those. They have their certain investing style, and that is why. You know, content has only traditionally seen only a few set of investors doing well and not everyone else uh, because well, it's, it's not everyone. Right. So I, I have a quick follow-up question as we get to the end of the podcast here, which is in that journey from zero to five million users before you can even really meaningfully experiment on monetization, right? Like you said, there's maybe one or two or three percent that will monetize. How do you keep your intellectual integrity that is the product connecting, right? Is it just engagement and retention? Is there something else you're looking? Forget the monetization. That, okay, this is going to lead to something, right? This is not going to be just some random, you know, utilitarian app, you know, another 10 clock app or the 15th alarm app or whatever it is, right? Or, or 1500 app, right? So because there's the downside of those utilitarian or content things where you may never make it past that initial valley, as it were. Right. So I think for that, there are two uh, important metrics that you need to look at. One is, you know, the organic install rate because and and you should uh, actually be building experiments with which you can try out various viral loops. Like if you're not having a viral loop embedded in your product, uh, then you will have it. You will find it very hard uh, for, you know, content, uh, you know, for a content platform to take off uh, because otherwise you will end up giving a lot of money to you know, Google, Facebook, and now to us also, and maybe to a few other people to install, you know, to get installs from users. And uh, you'll have to wait for that brand to get built. And once that brand is built, you can expect that they organically users are But honestly, what happens is that when you spend so much, you end up advertising to almost everyone on the internet. And then uh, even then, if people are not using your CAC, you know, it balloons to something very, very big. So unless you have a Fairly large, and it works for edtech, by the way, because you know the LTV is very large. The amount of money they can charge is very large. It actually doesn't work for any other you know content platform as such, right? So uh, it's 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 about uh, getting that organic loop picked in. Uh, you know you have to have that in place because that gives you a good marker of uh, whether people are referring your product to other people. Uh, sometimes they do it intentionally. Sometimes they do it unintentionally. Uh, like, uh, but in both cases, you have to have those mechanics picked in. And then, secondly, uh, your retention is definitely important because uh, once you have a good retention number, uh, you can you know that you know for every dollar spent, how much dollar uh, you don't have to spend again, right? Uh, dollar retention is uh, far more important. Uh, like if you are completely organic, like if you are growing organically, you have an organic loop placed and you are not spending dollars. Great. Fantastic. That's actually how our journey was in the first uh, two, three years. We were majorly 90 percent organically growing as a, as a company up to, I think, uh, uh, I think seven, eight million DAUs. Uh, we were up to like, uh, I think this was till 2018, uh, you know, up to eight million DAUs. We were majorly organic. Now, being organic gives is a, is a superpower. 
because your retention automatically is higher you know your your at the and every and your cac is automatically very low and uh, so so uh, i think that's that's something which allowed us to keep our sanity in place that we had those organic loop we had those uh, uh, you know organic growth coming in uh, and if you look at our organic loop it was very simple the most important thing that any user could do on share chat from day one was share content and whenever you would share content outward we would just attach a link to it. like a very small simple thing out of 10 shares uh, out of 10 people who view your shared content one would click on that link out of 10 people who click on the link one would install the app so that was a 1% conversion now if somebody shares 100 content pieces to 10000 people i still get 100 users right and that one user has been able to give me 100 users by sharing 100 you know just 100 content pieces now how much time does it take to share 100 content pieces four days because every day somebody who shares shares about 20 to 25 times so this is back in 2015 2016 now this this itself was a fantastic now again some people would click on this link intentionally some people would click on this link unintentionally some people would uh, you know share the content with the intent that people should install share chat some people would share the content you know without the intent that they should they should install share chat i don't care you know for me as a, as an entrepreneur what i care about is my top of the funnel was ballooning you know, i don't really have to spend dollars to do that and then i have to build those experience uh, those moments of experience with which the user who has come in retains for the long term so, you know yeah that's how i kept facility a hey, wonderful uh, sorry this is just a uh, gold mine lots of interesting insights i have i have plenty more questions but we do need to wrap here so i'm going to ask you just one last one and maybe you can give a brief answer you know we often talk about the ups and ups right of the founder's journey and there are enough down moments uh, yeah. in the founder's journey and as we are going through one broad down moment right like funding seems to have dried up etc although there are some sort of rumors about your own funding but nonetheless for sort of talking more broadly what are what are some of the you know can you talk a little bit about how do you keep your energy levels and spirits high during the down moments right uh, that will be a good way to potentially end uh, the podcast sure um, you know again i would use a <laughs> quote and analogy that we had been taught about or we you know this you know we had somebody tell us or probably we told someone that when you're baking a cake you don't congratulate the chef when the, he gathers the ingredients so uh, you know capital is something as gathering ingredients if uh, you know if there is a, you know bird flu and you know chickens disappear from the market and you have less number of eggs that doesn't mean that the chef is bad or the cake will not be baked the cake will still be made you know with less number of eggs probably but uh you know find good chefs will find the eggs irrespective of whether there is you know bird flu or not uh and good chefs will make good cakes even with lesser number of eggs uh so you know you should focus on the act of baking and not you know worrying about how many ingredients you have because you got to make do with whatever you have when times are great you'll be able to gather a lot of eggs milk and uh flour and when times are bad obviously you will have the markets will be like this so if anybody is lucky enough to as a founder they will end up seeing a lot many downturns in the market you know it's because upswings are things that uh, you can see quite easily most of the time markets are not bad actually markets are bad you know once in 3 years once in 4 years uh, but markets are good that's like the general status quo like for a growing economy like ours so um, so i would say that you know we have seen this we have seen different kinds of downturns we've seen the funding winter of uh, 2016 uh, you know 2015 2016 and we were born in that you know time frame we uh, raised our first funds in uh, early 2015 and then you know in the middle of 2015 and then in the middle of 2016 we raised uh, you know uh, a lot of our uh, you know early funds uh, but uh, it didn't really bother us that what's happening in the market because the fact remains that all vcs all investors you know it is their job to invest you know founders should understand that uh, they they it's not that you know people will stop investing in ab mera man nahi main nikar raha right uh, they, <laughs> it is people are in the job of investing they will become a bit more conservative uh, with respect to valuations with respect to the capital that they can deploy but you necessarily did not need a lot of the capital that you were taking up earlier you know if you are a good chef you will bake your cake well irrespective of the number of eggs you get so uh, you know, and, and that's what people should focus on you know they should understand that uh, 
you know, while we say we should race for 18 months, like all of us, uh, me as an angel, you as a VC, we would have always said, and me as a founder has also done this, that, you know, we race for 18 months, we race for 18 months. But the back of our mind, like for the, as a founder, you know, Ankush, Bhanu and I, we always used to imagine that this is our last fundraise. We won't do this. You know, because one, it is a very painful process, you know, I, I going through the, you know, discussions, going through term sheets, going through the fear of not getting a term sheet, going through the fear of rejecting the, you know, good VC or rejecting a you know, good source of long-term money, you know, so uh, there are like lots of fears when you are, when you are raising and we always used to have this, you know, frame of fight that, uh, this will be a last round. Iske baad nahi race karenge. And when you play the game like that, uh, you really plan for longevity. But what happens is that when you plan for longevity, you do so well and your economics are so good that at, at the end of seven, eight months, uh, your numbers start looking very, very, very good for the next round to happen. And then your, you know, the VCs, the investors who you have on board will push you in that direction, will introduce you to people who eventually will give you the next term sheet. So you know, that as a you know operating method has helped us you know so far. Uh, and again, we've been lucky in so many ways to uh, have survived this path. And another kind of downturn is when you have competition, like you know, competition that's crazy. You know, I hope that kisi ke zindagi mein bind us just a competition hai. But <laughs> we had that competition. It's, it's super hard to fight uh, you know people uh, who are so passionate. But it's also very inspiring that, you know, as a, as a country, as an ecosystem, how far be, you know, behind we are from China, you know, they are, all of them, like their entire team, their entire, uh, you know, work ethos is far more uh, aggressive and, and uh, far more, you know, business oriented than our ecosystem. So, so I think uh, uh, doubters teach you a lot. Uh, you should focus on the fact that you know you have to stay long enough. Every capital, you, every dollar you raise, you should treat it as the last dollar you raised, and uh, you know be honest to the destination, be honest to the process, and believe in the process. You know if you are really a great entrepreneur, you will sail through irrespective. You know this is just you know uh, yes your body. yeah yeah I'm I'm speechless and that's rare. This is like almost coming onto our hundredth episode for the Finance Partners podcast, but this is. Absolutely terrific advice from a terrific founder that consider every funding round as your last one and then it won't be your last one because you will operate for longevity. So thank you so much, Farid, for being on the podcast. Uh, delightful to talk to you and so good to see you after uh, several years. Uh, thank you. So, uh, thank you very much, Abed. Thank you for having me over. It's great chatting with you as always. Dear listeners, thank you for listening to this episode of the podcast. Subscribe now on your favorite podcast app for free and you'll be the first one to know when new episodes are available. Just search for Prime Venture Partners Podcast in Apple Podcast, Spotify, CastBox or however you get your podcasts. Then hit subscribe. And if you have enjoyed the show, we would be really grateful if you leave us a review on Apple Podcast. To read the full transcript, find the link in the show notes.